Hi buddies, Marvin here from TechBureau.com where we do unboxings, reviews, and sexy bureaus. And today we're going to do an unboxing review of the LensGo LWM328C wireless lavalier microphone. Now this microphone features one of the most important aspects that you should be considering when getting a wireless lavalier microphone and that is redundancy or backup. This microphone features micro SD card recording allowing you to have a sort of backup system just in case the audio cuts out at some point giving you a more stress-free recording environment. In this video, we'll discuss about the design, construction, features, and of course, the said backup system. With that being said, let's get into it. By the way, the reason why I wanted to review a wireless lavalier microphone like this is that some of you are asking me to review some camera gears that I've been using in my videos. So sometimes I integrate videos like this on our channel. With that out of the way, right here we have the packaging for the LensGo LWM328C wireless lavalier microphone. Around the box, we just have the typical product information, image previews, and the usual stuff. But what's important here is that since this is wireless, it allows you to move around without worrying about cables and that you can focus on what you are doing or filming, especially the fact that, like I said earlier, it has a sort of backup system via a micro SD card slot, giving you an extra layer of peace of mind. The packaging is pretty good with substantial protection for the package contents and inside the box we have a pouch, a couple of paperwork, an instruction manual and I guess a warranty card. We also have a silica gel to keep moisture in check but aside from that inside the pouch we actually have a few more items. We have a cold shoe mount for mounting the receiver to your camera and it also has a quarter inch thread for mounting it on a tripod. We also have the lavalier microphone itself with a nice threaded locking design and a 3.5mm TRS to TRS cable for using this with a camera with a nice cold cable making it extremely compact with an option to extend its length. Aside from that, we also have another cable. This one is softer and more flexible and features a 3.5mm TRS to TRRS connector for using this on a smartphone. We also have a clip and a foam filter. And finally, of course, we have the wireless transmitter and receiver devices. Alright, so right here we have the receiver and in terms of design and construction, it is made mostly out of ABS plastic with this nice textured finish. We also have some branding and model name right here. In front right here we have a set button that doubles as the power button. And on the other side we have a plus and minus buttons which are essentially our navigation buttons. And as you can tell we have a decently sized display right here at the center. Flipping it on the left side we have an infrared sensor. And flipping it on the other side, we have a USB Type-C port and the battery compartment. So this is powered by two AA batteries, which in my opinion is a better way to do it so that you can easily interchange batteries in between recordings. Now right here at the back, we have a metal clip where you can attach the included hot shoe mount for mounting this on your camera or a tripod. Turning it all over at the top side, we have two threaded ports and two antennas. We have an output port and the monitor port, both of which are of course 3.5mm interface. We also have an LED indicator here at the center. The two antennas are non-detachable and both are relatively flexible. Again, this is the receiver device that should be plugged into your camera or host device. Now here is the transmitter device which pretty much have the same design and construction. Right here we have the set button and we also have here the same plus and minus navigation buttons and a display at the center. What's different here is that we have the TF card slot also known as a micro SD card slot. This supports 32GB capacity which in my opinion is substantial enough for audio recordings. In my opinion, this is the single most important feature of this device that makes it stand out from the rest of the vast available wireless lavaliers out in the market. This essentially records your audio separately to the micro SD card aside from what it is transmitting and recording to your camera allowing you to have a very important backup in case your audio recording via the wireless frequency cuts off at some point due to interference and other factors. Now going back to the parts overview, on this side we also have an infrared sensor and then on the other side we have the same USB Type-C port and the battery compartment. Another key difference compared to the receiver is here on top. Aside from the two 3.5mm ports, we also have a dedicated power button and just a single antenna. By the way, I think the reason why the receiver has two antennas is that it actually supports two wireless transmitters in different groups. So we have the line in port and the microphone port and of course, we also have an LED indicator right here. Overall, in terms of design and construction, it has a nice balance between good build construction, lightweight form factor, while also having all the necessary ports and buttons. 
The package also includes all the necessary cables for multi-platform compatibility, which is very nice. Alright, so for initial setup, of course, the lavalier microphone cable goes to the mic input port. And what's good about this is that it is threaded, allowing you to secure it in place and don't worry about it coming off accidentally. The same goes with the cable for the receiver. And if you want, you can also plug in a headphone on the monitor port for monitoring the audio. But of course, someone else has to do it for you while you speak at a distance using the lavalier microphone. Now, like I said, you can insert a micro SD card for audio recording backup. But what I found out about this after the fact is that you have to enable the recording mode inside the menu and make sure the recording icon is visible on the LCD display. It also doesn't sync up with your camera, so essentially, you have to manually disable the recording inside the menu or otherwise, it will just continue recording. A slight hassle but I can live with that as long as I have a backup. Again, both the transmitter and receiver are powered by two AA batteries which depending on the battery can last ideally up to 5 hours which should be substantial enough for any type of video recording, even for live streaming. Now, before we finally head into our in-depth microphone test, let's browse through the menus first and talk about the pairing process. So to power on the transmitter, just press and hold the power button for a few seconds. There you go. And on the display, we have the volume, channel, lock, microphone, noise filter, battery life, groups, and TF card recording icons. Now for the receiver, since it doesn't have a dedicated power button, probably due to the additional antenna, you have to press and hold the set button instead. On this display, we have a different set of icons. We have the volume level, group A and group B on both sides, as well as their corresponding battery level. Now, there are a number of ways to pair these two devices together. You can pair this using auto search or via the IR sync, but for me, the ideal way is manually setting up the channels. What I did here is I followed the user manual and set the channel to 79 and as you can see, both the LED indicators are still blue, meaning we are not paired yet. Next, I set the channel on the receiver's end to 79 as well and as you can tell, we're now green which means both the receiver and the transmitter are now paired together and you can actually verify that by introducing sound on the microphone and the audio level should show some activity. So we have the channel, frequency groups if you have two transmitters, so right now we're currently using the frequency group A. Next, we have a power key lock to make sure you won't accidentally turn off the device. Mic gain to set your input gain, LED on and off, low cut option if you want to eliminate low frequencies or ambient noise, audio input to select your preferred interface, TX power to set your preferred frequency power for different distances. Essentially, this means for high TX power, you can go as far as 150 meters and using the middle TX power allows you to go as far as 100 meters. This consequently affects battery life so take that into consideration. Next, we have the record option. And as I pointed out earlier, you have to make sure this is always enabled. And lastly, we have language and reset. Pretty straightforward. Now for the receiver, we have power A, which basically allows you to turn on and off the power for the particular group, which is important if you don't use both groups at the same time. We also have channel, volume, auto search, IR trans A, and the same options for group B. We also have power key lock, LED, audio output for mono or stereo, language, and reset. Alright guys, with the unboxing, parts overview, setup, and menus out of the way, let's finally head into our microphone testings. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using the default lavalier microphone. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using the default lavalier microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with a purple panda lavalier microphone. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with a purple panda lavalier microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with the Cooler Master MH751 microphone. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with the Cooler Master MH751 microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using a cheap generic lavalier microphone. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using a cheap generic lavalier microphone. 
This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using the Boya WM4 lavalier microphone. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with a Boya BY WM4 Mark II lavalier microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C using the default lavalier microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with a purple panda lavalier microphone. This is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with the Cooler Master MH751 microphone. This is a microphone test using the LensGo LWM328C without a carpet and without some acoustic foams. Again, this is a microphone test using the LensGo LWM328C without a carpet and without some acoustic foams. This is to test the reverb in this room without any sound treatment. Alright guys, so now this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with carpet installed but without any acoustic foams yet. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with carpet installed but without acoustic foam installed yet. Please let me know in the comments below if you hear any difference compared to without any carpet installed on this room. Now, let's install some acoustic panels on our ceiling, some on the walls, and other places here in our studio. Now this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with carpets and with some acoustic foams installed on our ceiling. Again, this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with carpet installed and some acoustic foams on our ceiling. This is a microphone test using the LensGo LWM328C without a carpet and without some acoustic foams. Now this is a microphone test for the LensGo LWM328C with carpets and with some acoustic foams installed on our ceiling. Hopefully, there is a significant difference in terms of reverb compared to without carpet and without some acoustic foams on our ceiling. Let me know in the comments below what you think about our sound test and overall what you think about the LensGo LWM328C. Alright guys, so basing on our microphone test, the default lavalier microphone of the LensGo LWM328C is quite decent. But I feel like the sound signature is a bit flat for my personal preference. That's why I opted to replace it with the lavalier microphone of the Purple Panda. It is still pretty substantial for most people and I still do recommend it. Now for the entire package, I honestly feel that the LensGo LWM328C is one of the better options out there when it comes to reliable wireless lavalier microphones because not only it does have a wide range of available frequency channels to avoid interference, but it also has a nice backup solution to make sure you won't lose your sanity when it comes to audio recordings, which happened to me quite a lot before. So this is definitely a good upgrade and a sort of solution to my problems. And there you have it guys. Thank you for watching. Huge thanks to LensGo for sending this in. You can get this from the link below. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see more Camera Gears review in the future. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you like this and see you next time. Have a great day guys. You're awesome.